Well, this is a really interesting question. I can talk about it. I'll repeat the question. It's can I talk about the relationship of advanced mathematics to modeling of consciousness in, in layman's terms, correct? Um, one of the great mysteries still to be addressed by philosophy is why is it that numbers, which are, after all, constructs of the human mind, why is it that numbers are so incredibly powerful for the description of nature? Nature, after all, is somehow given, we find it all around us, and numbers arise in the depths of human ratiocination. So what is the relationship of these things to each other? This is, it may appear to be an, an easy question. It's such a difficult question that it wasn't even asked in philosophy until the 20th century. Uh, it's very puzzling, and I think that it indicates a fundamental congruency between processes that are mental and the structure of the world itself. Uh, this is why I didn't get into it too much tonight in a popular lecture like this, but I am the inventor or the purveyor of a mathematical theory of consciousness. And I believe that more powerful than any atom smasher, more subtle than any space telescope, is the human mind. The human mind is the most subtle and superb of all instruments for the study and measurement of nature. When we look into ourselves, we discover the same patterns that we discover in the birth and death of a species, the flow of a river, the collapse of a corporation, or the flowering of a love affair. It's that process is somehow under the aegis of a kind of universal equation of description. So it doesn't matter whether it's the birth and death of your hope, or the rise and fall of the Assyrian Empire, or the evolution of the Pacific Ocean, processes always occur in the same way. And this is why there is congruence between the mental world of human beings and the world of abstract mathematics and the world of nature. These things are, as it were, simply different levels of condensation of the same universal stuff. This is why the concept of truth can have some meaning. I mean, when you think about it, truth, why should it even be possible for us as monkeys to entertain that notion? Where is it writ large that m mammals traveling in packs should have any relationship to truth whatsoever? And yet the faith is that somehow thinking means something. It's not just something we do, it means something. It means something because there is sufficient freedom within the human system to be both right or wrong. And this right or wrong lays upon us the obligation of mirroring nature in models which we build in our own minds. Now the old idea in science was that these mathematical models of nature were in fact laws, truths eternal platonic truths that were being teased out. In the 20th century, a slight epistemological sophistication leads to this word models, where we say we're modeling reality. Uh, and our model is only as good as we need it to be. If we're trying to model the flight of an artillery shell, 
the model needs to be only good enough to get the artillery shell to its target. We don't need to understand the essence of lead or the nature of motion there. We simply need the model to kick out the data that interests us. And in the 20th century, it's been understood that all knowledge is dependent upon the question asked. And the relationship of mathematics to nature is one of the profound indicators, I think, that uh, truth can be known. Maybe not the truth, but uh, I always think of the positivist philosopher Wittgenstein, who was once asked in a classroom situation about a certain proposition, is it the truth? And he said, well, it's certainly true enough. And, you know, that's where we are with our modeling of the world and with our mathematics. It is the truest truth we know. It is true enough.